What's up guys and welcome back to the episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 23, what a dramatic ending to the last episode man, just about scraping through to the Europa League semis with our win against Derby Salts, but today we'll play both legs of the semis away and at home against Turkish side Galatasaray, we'll play three, maybe four of our final six Premier League games as well, and uh, we'll start off with this, FA Cup semi-final against Liverpool. Yep, aiming to retain the trophy won last season, but if we're going to do that we need to make the final, if we're going to do that we need to come through Liverpool, a formidable foe of course in the final four uh, heading into the game got a strong lineup out there there are some tired legs but Liverpool's team I would say is probably slight favourites for this one they've got Alisson in goal and the back four is Danilo Canate Jurel Hato and Andrew Robertson at left back the midfield trio is Conrad Lehmer 91 overall Pedri and Javi Guerra with the front three being Rodrigo Luis Diaz and of course the man that always scores against me Afina Jan. First game of many, Liverpool FA Cup semi-finals aiming to keep our dreams of retaining this trophy alive. Come on, you Jarrys. The FA Cup is very interesting in the sense that not many teams have actually retained it. Uh, Arsenal did it about 10 years ago. I know Spurs have done it as well. Um, and I know Man City, of course, have the chance to do it this season as well. It'd be interesting to see if they do that. But there's not actually that many that have gone on to retain it. Many teams have won it multiple times, but retaining a competition, I always feel that is a mark of a team that's trying to build a dynasty. You know, can, can they not just win it multiple times over multiple years, but retain it going into a following year as well? That would be a heck of an achievement for us and for anyone, really. As Oh my goodness gracious me. I tell you what, like, free kicks from that range for the air at times are automatic. Would work right, I would still nil no. Oftentimes, yeah, free kicks from, from that range have a higher success ratio than pens for the AI and ultimate. Oh, as Looney makes a fabulous save by Athena Jan. I cannot keep this guy quiet, man. I've got no answer to him. You know, every year there's always a striker that like I, I struggle against the most. As Jarrell Hato capitalizes on a corner fail to be cleared. Athena Jan is that guy, but in this case, it's the Dutch defender. Hato with the opener, Liverpool in front. It was coming, fast start. I've stumbled out the blocks early. Right, extra time winning against Derby Salzburg. I know we'd have some tired legs for this one here. And right now he's, he's showing us there's plenty of time. Plenty of time, but the key is just not going two goals down. When we played Arsenal in the EFL Cup final, that was, our, that was our big blow. We put ourselves in a hole early, couldn't come back from that, even though he started attacking late. Just got to make sure that the longer we stay in it, just 1-0, there's still plenty of time to, to find a leveller. I'm, I'm not panicking, but again, the key is, is not... Is not Going all out attack, trying to find that level as soon as possible. Just don't concede a second. If you want to chip away at a deficit, be it a large one or a small one, you, you have to get stops first, you know. Build from a strong defense. Tillman shot blocked. It will drop to Matty. Cashew has a go. A lot of power behind that, but Allison pushes it behind. Better into the first half after stumbling out of the block. Certainly regained our footing a little bit. There's in mind drop to Solanke. Keeps the chance alive. Tillman can't get there and, and Liverpool will clear. Better into the first half. But we'll enter the second half still down by a goal. Better though, much better. Oh man, just got an injury down that left hand side. It's Vinicius wins it back and it's Kerkez who's gone down. We know, we know we're missing Jack Clark, so one of our left side pairing is already down for the season. And that well might be the man in the back four on that left who's down for the rest of the season. That's going to be a huge blow, man. That is going to be huge if that's the case. Still having a, uh, a deficit to make up in the league. Europa League semis to come as well. Solanke couldn't get through. That is massive. Praying that's just a bruise. Rigo back to Danilo. And Cunha intercepts. Tillman. Solanke. Yes, come on. <sighs> calm, calm, calm. 15 minutes still to go. It's coming. It was coming and the persistence pays off. Making a change on the flanks as well. Cunha and Nato both coming off for Christie and Jaden Anthony. Due to the tired legs out there. 50 to go. It's, it, to be honest, it's been all Bournemouth, really. Other than the uh, the early stages where we fell behind, we, we've been the better team. We deserve that level that we've got here. But the, the, the question is, uh, it was never really the question for me. I, I did say it's about half an hour in. I feel confident we can get a goal. Plenty of time, but it's, it's just getting stops. We've done that. Building from that solid foundation. But now, 
We need to make sure we don't lose our discipline, man. You're often most vulnerable when you've just scored. Let's make sure that isn't the case this time. What a ball, Zabani. Rodrigo down the right. Liverpool going to break hearts late. Kerkez does brilliantly, but can't clear. Salah, Lunin, what a save. Andre Lunin with a huge save. What a game. This has been brilliant, man, honestly. FA Cup semi-final, living up to the high. Corner whipped in. Vinicius heads it away. Oh, no, 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 no. Solanke's pass wasn't the best. And I, oh, God, now Liverpool are going to get one last chance to win it themselves. It was going to be us. Now it's Liverpool. Rodrigo forced backwards, and that should do it. Ref, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, God. Extra time. What a game. What a game. We've got 30 more minutes, man. These are the games I say it all the time. These are the games that are my favourite. It's so tense. I have to say, for as good as normal time was, extra time was a bit of a letdown. Deep cross by Diaz. Headed on. Lunin. Wait, what? No. Oh, no, no, no. It's for an earlier instant. Oh, my God. Bring everyone back, it's the last chance. I oh, asked yeah, going to be cashes all day. For a second there, I have to say, I thought the ref had just given the worst penalty ever. But it is indeed going to be penalties, but a shootout. We beat them in the FL Cup semis on spot kicks, but lightning rarely strikes twice. We're back against them again with spot kicks. This time for a place in the FA Cup final. What a game, what a contest. Spot kick settles the winner. So here we go, penalties to separate the winner. We're at Liverpool's end. There's Dominic Solanke who scored the equaliser. Come on, captain. Puts us in front. Salah to take the next. Oh, glorious pen. I, I mentioned this before. I don't know if you guys have the same experience as me, but like I, I go the right way on a lot of penalties, but still get nothing on it. Yes, Ryan Christie. In this year's FC. Like, oftentimes I'll guess correctly, but I just can't get close to it. It's Cody Gakpo hits it with power. And Liverpool are back on their returns. 100% thus far. And it's going to be Jaden Anthony next man up. And right now, Alisson's getting nowhere near it. But you know that probably won't last much longer. Luis Diaz is next up. And again, I've gone the right way. But still, can't even get a fingertip on it. Dan Neal to take the next one. This time, can Alisson guess the right way? No, he stays central. And it's 4-3. It's 100%. Endo is next up. And he's... Oh, it's as cool as you like. Just places it in to make it 4-4. Malik Tillman, the American, scores. And it's still 100%. And it's going to be Pedri next up. The Spanish wonder kid. Now, every single penalty has been scored with conviction. Oh, for God, come on, I just can't get anything on it. I just can't get anything on it. Ilya Zavani, I'm not feeling confident. But he has still scored it. Keepers are getting absolutely nowhere near these. Couple of been brilliant strikes. Some others, uh, a bit sus, if you will. Conrad Lima, next man up. A lot of power on that. Oh, come on. Just, I can't get this right. Friend group. Old reliable. Come on, bro. Yes. Keepers getting nowhere near this, man. This is crazy. Andy Robertson, next man up. Surely, surely at some point, right? Surely at some point you expect Lunin or Allison to get something on it. Straight down the middle. This is unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. I'm not feeling confident with Matty Cash here, I must say. I'm not feeling confident. Well, guys, settle in because we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> Calvin Ramsey to take the next one for Liverpool. Wow. Keepers, keepers get ready. Keepers get ready. I don't remember the last time I had keepers take pens, but it's looking very likely. Because at the moment, they can't do much with their hands. So they'll be asked to do it with their feet and say, this is unbelievable. This, this might be like an hour-long video because this is unbelievable, man. I can't take a break here because neither keeps getting anything on there. Kanate. Surely Lunin. Oh, thank God. I thought he missed it. He chipped it to the right. I thought Lunin missed it. Andre finally makes a save. And Bournemouth 
are heading to the final. That is ridiculous. What a bizarre shootout. But Bournemouth make it through. Ibrahim Akonate chips it to the right. And Lunin, oh my god, for a second I thought he dived underneath it. But no, he just about gets gloves on. It's an awful penalty. But after so many good ones, we were expecting a poor one. Finally, there's a save. Bournemouth are into the final. Wow, that's got to be one of the longest shootouts I've had in, well, perhaps most of FIFA. Certainly in this year's FC, it's my longest one. But goodness gracious me. So it will be. Oh, how about the Kirkus injury? Ah, oh, well, there's the cost. Yes, we won. But at what cost? This is the cost. Kirk is done for this season. So we're missing both our left side pairing now. For the Europa League semis, the final Premier League running, and the FA Cup final against Manchester United as well. Kirk is just like Clark. A uh, Clark. Clark. Done for this season. Right, following game. Back to matters in the league on the weekend. We know now top four is basically gone. But seventh and sixth are definitely still achievable. But if we're going to do that, we need to win the remainder of our six games, I would say. Starting off here, Selhurst Park. Crystal Palace away. Or after playing two hours of football at Wembley, got to make a lot of rotations for this one and hope an understrength side can get the job done. Come on, you cherries. Oh, my God, that was amazing. I can't remember the last time I did a shootout where I didn't miss a single penalty. Normally, I missed the first. Like, normally, I missed the first penalty. If not the first, then definitely the second. That's one of the first times as Dominic Solanke almost fires in the opener. You'll, uh, you'll see me score every single penalty that does not happen very often and it probably won't happen again for the remainder of fc anyway still no no here 17 minutes in but tired legs out there a lot of rotation and this is going to be the key now try and keep our dreams of fifth or sixth in the league alive guaranteeing europa league football that way trying to win the europa league and the fa cup final as well have we got the depth have we got the energy have we got the mental fortitude to do all of those three things in the remainder of the season Oh, good ball through. He's A. Beats Loon into the ball. 84 rated now for those curious. And Eberechi gives the host the opener. 26 minutes in. And we fall behind against Crystal Palace. It's 11th goal in 31 games. Just over one in every three. Not bad at all. Palace in front. Yeah, we're, we're, we're starting to slow down a little bit. We needed extra time to overcome Salzburg. We needed spot kicks to beat Liverpool. Yeah, we're, uh, we're, we're playing a lot of games now. A lot of games. Oh, finish, Dominic. And you can see the wear and tear effect in the boys. Still, leveller instantly, 1-1. One, one. This kind of reminds me of Liverpool a couple of years ago when they were chasing the quadruple. And uh, they were just playing game after game after game after game in such quick succession with very little rest time between the games. They had players that were getting tired and needing to, to be rested. And they were constantly rotating their lineup and playing players that were deep in their rotation. And you just kept thinking, game after game, oh, surely they're going to slip up here. You know, try and keep pace with Man City in the title race. Surely they're going to slip up here. And they just kept finding a way to win. That mental fortitude kept finding a way to grind out a win and stay with Man City. They pushed them all the way to the end, of course. And then Guardiola's side ran out 3-2 in a, another classic final day. Um, against Aston Villa. Um, it, it, it feels so similar. Like You just keep thinking at some point, at some point, at some point, are we going to drop off? Well, for now, we're still in the hunt. But now 2-1 down here. Maybe the Premier League is, uh, is looking all but gone. Sorry, what I mean is when I say the Premier League is gone, we won't be able to catch the teams above us. And if we are going to qualify for Europe, it will need to come through winning a cup, either the FA Cup or the Europa League. So I think it's definitely gone now. Yeah, we, uh, we're just running out of steam, playing so many games, getting absolutely exhausted and just can't get our form sort of in the league. I think now, if we want to be in Europe next season, we've got to win either the FA Cup or the Europa League. But the thing is, it's not over yet. I mean, if you, if you look at the league table, as I'll quickly show you the, uh, the academy here, and again, the best two remaining. And I'm, I'm so pleased to see this. Ben McKenzie has not asked for a pro yet. Ben McKenzie and, uh, and Frank Ross still remain the best two here. Um, if you look at the league table, it's, it's not done yet. I mean, we're three behind Manchester United, we're six behind Liverpool, five games to go. Liverpool are away against Spurs today as well, so fingers crossed Poster Coley can do us a favour there. It, it's not done yet. Look, we can't make four for 13 points off. It's only six, four, seven if we can catch now, but it's, it's not done yet. But I think we've got to win all of our remaining five games. Starting with this one, uh, following game, Brighton away in a South Coast derby. I said we've eclipsed the Seagulls now, but... If we want to keep playing European football, then we need to beat them here away at the Amex. Massive game here to follow on from the loss. Come on, you cherries. 
going deep into the rotation now you've got a, a left-sided pairing of Zamura and Jaden Anthony for this one here and oh what a ball that is and onside at the far post Brighton going from yeah Jack Clark and Kirk is done for the season that that is a massive miss for the remainder of the campaign and we are we are not going to make it now in the league I don't think it's, it's, it's going to be all on the FA Cup and the Europa League. I might jump to the bench at half-time and say, Zod it. Eighth is where we'll finish. Let's just go for the, uh, for the knockout competitions. Friend group to Solanke. Anthony has him running down left-hand side. He'll find him. Oh, he's got such little energy, but he's got enough. And he's just saved and cleared away. Solanke is absolutely... The skipper is just absolutely gas, man. But I just keep saying, I need you, bro. I need you. 20 minutes in, but uh, still a goal down. It's going to be two. It's going to be two. It is. Mukoko with the finish. And I might just say to Dom, look, mate, just just rest up for the trip to Thursday, uh, for, on Thursday to Turkey. Because you, you just, you're just too tired. <laughs> I just can't keep playing him, man. He's absolutely gassed out there. By half-time, he will basically be done. And, you know, it's, it's all well and good having a striker like that in your team. But not if they're too gassed. They can barely run. 2-0 down. This, this game is over. The Premier League season's over. That's when you, uh, you kind of beg the question, you know, is it better to go with a player who's carrying a knock, for example, and can only play at, like, half his ability... With the injury hampering his, uh, his, his performance? Or would you rather go with someone who's fit, fresh and raring to go on the bench? Who's perceived to be the weaker player, but doesn't have any of those injury or fitness problems. Well, I don't know. But what I do know is that Yusufa Mukoko is as good as ever now at Brighton. 3-0 down at the break. Pack the league season in. It's over. It's all on the FA Cup and Europa League. This is shades of my Luton Town career mode. My final season in uh, in the first stint with Luton. When I think we finished eighth that season as well. Yeah, I've emptied the bench. I've said forget about it, man. It is it is finished. Not just this game, but the, the league season as a whole. Sam Surridge gets away down the right. He's not the quickest, but he can finish when given a chance. And unfortunately, this time, the Bruggen... Prevents him from getting the goal. Still no, uh, sorry, still no, no, I wish. Still 3 0. But, oh, what a save again. And, and Beto does convert there. Great, great keeper live from Jacob Greaves. And it's 3 1. It's when it's time. But can we do this? Can the backup brigade do this? And the answer is no. The understrength Jerry is going to go back, but it's just a consolation. A 3 1 loss. It's back to back defeats in the league. And we've hung up the season altogether on the conclusion of this game now. Pack it up, pack it in, move on to the next one. Focus on Thursday night's trip to Turkey. Spurs beat Liverpool as well. So if we would have won those last two games back to back, we'd be level on goal difference, man. That hurts. But anyway, move straight past it and move straight into this one. Following game, Europa League semi-final first leg away in Turkey as we take on Galatasaray. I would say just like the previous two rounds against Derby Salzburg and Besiktas, we are favourites, but it's certainly not a formality, especially not in this kind of form. First leg in Turkey, get a big result here today. It was a Dorset we'll feel confident but a loss here and free on the trot and we'll certainly be panicking knowing there'll be a deficit to overcome in the second leg first leg's a massive one Galatasaray in Turkey come on you Joes Henry to Scott Cooney in behind Surge but yep Scott oh good stop by the regen goalkeeper turning it behind the corner not much to report in the first half to be honest as it's still nil-nil. And it seems though it's going to stay that way to the break as well. Very tense first leg. And like I said, we might be favourites. But it's far from a formality. This is still a very even contest. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't lose it at the end. Don't lose it at the end. This has been an awful, awful game. And no, it is going to finish goalless. My word, that is a terrible contest. But you know what? A goalless draw away Galatasaray to take you back home to the second leg. I wouldn't say we're favourites or underdogs, just like the previous round against Derby Salzburg. It's dead even heading back to Dorset. Right, following game, West Ham away. Back-to-back -back losses in the Premier League and heading into this one here. I mean, we could still catch Liverpool, who have now dropped a 7 for Manchester United in 6. But really, we're a lot more focused on that Thursday night second leg against Galatasaray. So if we win, that's great, but not too disappointed if we don't. Back upside out there for the most part. Come on, Jarrett. Yeah, I've got a few stars out there, including... Loon in between the sticks again. Cash, Solanke. 
Scott, but ultimately much, much, much changed side for what has been a catastrophic run in the Premier League. It, it really is shades of the uh, of, of the Luton Town career. Well, it was our, I think it was our fifth or sixth season in, in the first stint. And it was the year where, I mean, spoilers for those that haven't seen it and do want to watch it, we, um, yeah, we, we went, let's just say we were going far in the Champions League. Uh, but the Premier League was an abysmal campaign and an abysmal ending. Exactly the same this season as well. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, come on, got to be a finish. Yeah, there we go, Frendrup. Great hustle from Solanke, and it's Frendrup with... I think, I think it's third or fourth goal of the season. I love this guy, man. I really do. And we've got the leveller. O only now winning every single Premier League game gives us a chance, I would say, of, of top six or seven. So, yeah, a, a draw's not enough anymore. We'll, we'll battle till the end, but whatever the case may be, just cannot afford to see someone like Solanke or Scott get injured. Man, I swear, every save I've done, every team we manage, there is always one player who... Is not even close to being a star man in the squad. But I just absolutely love him to pieces. Alisson Yusuf in the Swansea save was like that as well. He was never going to be the star man. But we absolutely loved him. And it's the same with friend group, man. Can't get enough of him. There's Hamer pops it out wide. There's the Rosa man in the middle there and Dan Neal. Great first touch. Just couldn't get away. And that's a poor kick out of that. Go on, friend group. Oh, what a goal that would have been. Good stop. Still 1-1, but we need to find a winner to keep pace with Liverpool and Manchester United. Well, it's just under 15 minutes to go, so I've summoned the starters to the bench. Scott, Solanke, Cash. And just said, guys, good effort. Well done. Helped us get the, uh, the leveller. But... Forget going for a winner now. Just focus on first in. If we can get a point here, to be fair, away against the good West Ham side, I'll take it with an understrength side. And it would stop the rot after back-to-back -back losses. But at the moment, that's the best we'll be able to do. And that will guarantee there's no higher finish, I think. I think guaranteed than, uh, than eighth or seventh. There's Jaden Anthony. Rolls it across. Oh, Dan Neal. A bit more power beyond that. We could have won it. Uh, that is going to do it. 1-1 one, one draw. And, yeah, we'll take it. So, we've got understrength side and a point away against West Ham. Okay, fair enough. We can't make 7th or 6th now, but in the grand scheme of things, stops the after back to back losses. It's not terrible. But this is the big one. No wins in our last four games in all competitions and now heading back home for the second leg of our Europa League semi-final against Galatasaray. Goalless in Turkey. So just like the previous round against Derby, Salzburg tied from the away leg heading back home. And if there's anything like that previous round, this may all be settled by a very, very fine margin. Second leg, Galatasaray in the semi, as we aim to get our first win after an in 4 and make it through to the Europa League final in Bournemouth's debut year in Europe. Come on, you charities. And obviously we, uh, oh, well done, Tillman. We, uh, we, uh, we know that just like that Salzburg game, it, it might well come down to just the one goal. After none, oh, great interception surgery. Yeah. After none scored in the first leg, I'm, I'm predicting another really, really tight game. I, I, I think it could go either way, and it could just be that one goal. A moment of magic, a moment of madness. Oh, it's Pedro Nato always provided a former, only for his half volley attempt to be stopped. This is going to be a really, really tense game. And I think one goal, just like the previous round, might separate the teams. Cash to Tyler, dinks it to Nato, nods on to Tillman and gets it back off him. So it's still deadlocked here, just like we were for the entire game in Turkey. Once again, very tight, very tight, very nervy, as to be expected. As Cash is sent down the flank, should win that first, nods it on, so is in the middle, Tillman is short. Alex Scott, great save, and push behind for a corner. Still 0-0, but once again, this is incredibly, incredibly tense. Both teams know one mistake, one error, and that will be their European adventure coming to an end. Solanke, what a save! Three brilliant saves in this first half to keep it at 0-0. Had the, had the chances, had the more of the ball, had more of the ball, I should say, but still tied until we know. Dominic Solanke does it again. Captain Fantastic heads home in the opener. The pressure pays off and Bournemouth lead. After two hours and 15 minutes worth of football, finally there's been a goal in a tie. And if someone was going to get it, 
Well, a lot of people would have been betting on Dominic Solanke being the man to provide it. Not going to rule out Galatasaray. Still, obviously, got an excellent team. Good, good, strong lineup going forward as well. Dovis Sogli, Wilfred Zahar, Nicole Lozani, Orla, who's been put on the floor there. But, oh, in a game of uh, fine margins and a tie of fine margins, that might be the difference maker. What a ball, Scott. Oh, Cunha just wide. Well, it's not been the best of contests, but... <laughs> Galatasaray ran out of steam, ran out of fight, and Bournemouth hold on. Just like the previous round, separated by one goal. Bournemouth are in to their first ever European final in their debut European season. Not a classic by any stretch of the imagination, but a difference maker, as has been so often in these three years. Dominic Solanke, skipper, heads us into our first ever European final. Yeah, I have to say, not a great game by any stretch of the imagination, to be honest, but job done. And after Milan held Marseille at the San Siro, we know who we will face. It is AC Milan against Bournemouth in the Europa League final. Two finals to end the season. Come on! It's going to be a much better final three league games today and say the two cup finals for the season finale itself. We can catch Liverpool, but it's unlikely. We need to win all of our remaining three and need to lose at least two of their final three. So now, sort of just playing for pride, really. Third final game of the season in the league. Aston Villa at home. Come on, you Jarrys. Ten minutes to go before the break. Deadlock yet to be broken. And uh, just like the West Ham game, really, it's not it's not a Premier League win, which we haven't had for a while. Well, not since the Brentford away day in the last episode, but it's a credible point against a good side here. We've not our strongest. However, oh, what a ball! We still could win it with an on-the-string form of side. Jaden Anthony, I think his first goal since we brought him back in the summer. And the Cherries lead. Sorry, it wasn't heading into this season when Anthony came back. It was uh, it was last season. This is his second year since returning from loan. I get my seasons mixed up when I'm doing a long career mode save. <laughs> I know you guys can relate to that. But uh, still, here's his first goal of the season in the league. And as things stand, it's going to be a game winner. Now, we haven't won a Premier League game at home in a long time long time so this would be a very welcome sight 27 minutes away from claiming it and to be fair it'll be a really decent result as well if we can see it out cash down the right oh wonderful slip through ball and wisely i'm just gonna go to the corner here with pedro neto free to go no this game is ours to throw away Scott goes all the way. It's going to be a man out wide there in Frendrup. There we go. Started left back in this game and has been solid. This is Frendrup in a nutshell. He just plays everywhere and does well. Game over. Dominic Solanke with a dagger. Bournemouth winning Dorset in the league for the first time in God knows how long. 2-0. Game over. And finally, a Premier League win on the board. But with a gap on Liverpool still remaining at six. And on Manchester United, eight. Yeah, it's a win, but it doesn't really count for much in the grand scheme of things. Let's play the final two games of the league season anyway, though, and our final game in Dorset this year. Coventry at home. Let's go into at least close the season out strong with a nice little winning streak. Come on, you Charles. Christy. Let's see Tillman with Cunha out wide, and this could be one. Oh my god, that is the greatest goal I've scored in MC24. What did I say about this guy blowing hot and cold? That is pure flames and the best goal. I have scored in FC24 and it might well be one of the best goals I've ever scored. Oh my god. Second replay is in the best of angles, but um, that is one of the all-time great goals I have scored throughout the entire franchise. Matthews with a bit of magic. Oh my word. Coventry might have been thinking if we pull off a bit of magic tonight, we could still survive. Matthews said, hold my surveyor. Oh, sorry, chits the bar. And it was dropped and cleared by Ben Chief. Yeah, they have, to, they have to win back to back to have any chance of surviving. After a moment like that from Matthews, at some point you just have to say, when things like that happen to you, you just have to sit there and say, do you know what? I don't think we've got this. Oh my god, that is, that is one of the greatest goals I've ever scored. That was absolutely 
unbelievable. Well, whilst the wins aren't going to get us to a higher league finish, it is nice to know after a horrendous run of form, we've got back-to-back -back wins in the Premier League for the first time, I believe, since January, or maybe even in the calendar year. The Sky Blues are relegated, but... I mean, let's be honest here, if you lose to a goal like that and get relegated by a goal like that, all you can do is hold your hands up and say fair play. Born win back to back, and let's try and end the season with three straight. Ah, uh, no, 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 please don't be McKenzie. Oh, it's not, it's not, thank goodness. After the game, we do see, oh, Matthias, you, you, mate, mate, do whatever's necessary. Keep doing those sort of things, and believe me, we'll be very successful. Uh, Victor Watson and Oscar Whitaker. Whitaker's the highest overall, I believe, or, yeah, highest overall. And uh, Watson's at the American centre half, I think it is. Uh, yeah, I can't check the potential, but uh, I'll give him pro deals regardless. Thank God it wasn't Frank Ross or Ben McKenzie. So heading into the final day, I mean, I mean, I mean, technically, technically we could still finish in seventh, but technically I could also still get married before the age of 32. So you know, but Chelsea, if they win on the final day away down the road, they are champions. Man City will need to win uh, themselves away at the Rico. Uh, for them to be champions, and Chelsea will need to lose, or, or fail to win, I should say. Arsenal and Spurs, uh, Arsenal have got third. Spurs, if they win, they guarantee fourth, but they might need to win. Actually, even a draw, even a draw will be enough for them to get uh, Champions League football. Newcastle in fifth, could finish fourth, but again, need to win, Spurs need to lose. Manchester United sixth, and again, we, we, we could technically leave from Liverpool, but we know it's not going to happen. As to the bottom three, uh, Brentford and Coventry are down, actually all three are down, and uh, Leeds are safe. So, final game of the season. Very anticlimactic indeed, can do, but not in the forest away. The City ground, as we aim to make it four straight wins in a row in all competitions and three straight in the league as Bournemouth finally get their form sorted before the two cup finals. Come on, you cherries. Win that, win that, win that. Oh, Luna will save, and Frederick just about does enough at the far post to keep it at 0 0. To be honest, I, I wouldn't be against it at all. That'd be four clean sheets in a row. Oh, Luna again. And uh, an unbeaten streak going into the game against Milan on Wednesday night in the Europa League final. It'll be six games without a loss in all competitions. Did Garang not handball that? Maybe not. But, um, yeah, this 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 will be a decent, and I know I keep saying it, in the grand scheme of things, a point doesn't really get us anywhere, but neither does a win, so if we get a clean sheet, I'll take it. And as the seconds tick away, and the Premier League season comes to its close, it's got to defend this final attack. And Bournemouth will indeed end the season off with a nice little stretch. Four clean sheets in a row in all competitions. No losses in six in all competitions. And not a bad way to end the season after what was a terrible, terrible run of form. We'll take that motivation, especially defensively, going into those two finals there. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with the end of the season here. And so after Chelsea did win at Ellen Road, it's their first Premier League title since 2017 and ends a run of what I believe would be five straight titles for Man City after winning the past two years. So Chelsea back on top of England. It's been a while and they're now once again Premier League champions. Man City were second with Arsenal in third and Spurs holding on to fourth place with a win over Brentford on the final day. Newcastle United fifth, Manchester United sixth and Liverpool seventh with Bournemouth in the end finishing in eighth place like we knew after the past two games. Burnley and Brighton wrapped up the top 10. Great return for Burnley in their first season back in the top tier. And as to the bottom three, this is already known. Crystal Palace, Brentford and Coventry City down to the championship. As for the individual stats this season, well, Christopher Nkunku is the main reason why Chelsea were champions. He dominated the race with the golden boot, finishing 10 clear of the four below. No, five below, I'm sorry. With um, with Solanke, Huang Hee Chan, Foden, Martinelli and Garcia all having 18 each. So nice to see Solanke, to be fair, uh, in the top five there. Although he was the only Bournemouth man on the entire list. Not great to see that. Uh, as for the assist title, though, he did win that. Dominic Solanke finishing one clear of Bakayo Saka. And Alex Scott was in the top five with eight in 30 as well. Jack Clark, despite missing the final third of the season, also was in the top 10 with seven in 27. Nato and Cunha also got in there with five apiece down the bottom. And as for the Golden Glove, Lunin, 14 in 38 after a nice little run with three straight in the final three games. Saw him win this year's Premier League Golden Glove in his debut season at the Vitality. As for the team of the tournament, 
as always, the goalkeeper does not go to the man who wins the Golden Glove. It was Vicario. The back four is Acuna, Upa Meccano, Ibanez and Matty Cash on his debut year for Bournemouth getting in there. But he was the only representative we have. The rest were Phil Foden, Martin Odegaard, Basuma and Kubu. Uh, Kubo, sorry, and the top two, Christopher and Kunku and Erling Haaland. Who was the player of the season? There's no animation. Oh, it wasn't Kunku. There we go. It wasn't Kunku. Uh, obviously, Luna did win the Golden Glove, but it, it always happens. I don't I don't know why I get this, but I know I've seen in the comments you guys have a similar experience. For some reason, that the goalkeeper of the tournament and the guy who wins the Golden Glove, if it's your goalkeeper, never makes a team of the season. It's always quite bizarre. Still, that'll do it for today's episode, guys. So, massive thank you for watching the awesome episode of Season 3. If you've enjoyed it, then please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll return with the season finale where we'll play both the Europa League final, Bournemouth's first in history, and also the FA Cup final as well, aiming to retain the trophy one last year as we go for a cup and European double. Have a great day. Much love, and I'll see you for the big season finale very soon.